adolescent. Did you ever drive drunk or drive too fast or just drive badly because you had friends in the car? I remember once actually seeing the needle go up to 125 when I was on the highway as a drunk rider, but not a driver, but that was kind of freaky. Um, what about try drugs or get into trouble related to drugs? Um, and another thing adolescents do a lot is get involved in risky sexual behaviors that lead to STIs like HIV and other things too. And these all have their dangerous side. And after just thinking about the, the role of the Crips and taking, you know, claiming Braddock, that's part of it. But I think the other part of it is how much of that was kind of fun? How much of it was sort of exciting? And again, I don't mean to say that there are dangers to this. But at the same time, when you were an adolescent, did you get inspired by anything new? Did you discover a new interest or passion or enthusiasm? Did you start dreaming about the big things you could do, maybe the impossible problems you'd like to solve? And what I want to focus on is the way that the thread that runs through so many aspects of adolescence, the very best and the very worst, has to do with fun. It has to do with pursuit of fun and enjoyment of fun. And yes, it can have a dangerous side, but it can have a really positive side too. Adolescents are often remarked on as having this health paradox where for a group of people at a point in the lifespan with excellent immune function and who should have good physical health, they have a disproportionate share of health problems. And these are related to the kinds of things I was just asking you about. Um, drugs, sexual behavior, driving, uh, other risks. And all of these things happen in social contexts for sure, but all of them have an element of fun and excitement that drives them. And you can appreciate where this comes from when you think about how it comes about. And a great illustration of this is a movie that actually came out almost 10 years ago, but it, it beautifully portrays this. It's called 13. And it was about a quiet, pretty typical girl who develops an intense, fast, exclusive friendship with the bad girl of her school. And the reviews describe this movie as alarming, disturbing. You, know, you watch this girl spiral down into delinquency. So I was curious and wanted to see it, and I'm a developmental psychologist, so you know, wanted to know more about that. And when I went to see it, I watched these two girls together shoplifting and getting their tongues pierced and getting themselves into some questionable situations with boys, breaking a lot of rules. And I have to admit that it was kind of exciting. And that was the funny part about it. I was prepared to be upset or distressed by it. And that tells us something about the core of adolescence that can have its good side and its bad side, of course. But I want to focus on what it means for the positive by trying to understand the negative better. This leads me to depression. Depression is one of the most common and devastating mental illnesses and it usually begins at adolescence, typically age 15 to 17. In fact, adults who are diagnosed with depression often find that when they look back, they had their first episode in their mid-teens. Depression causes suffering, disability, can lead to death in the case of suicide. And at any given point, any given year, 10% of the adult or adolescent population is experiencing depression. And even in terms of dollars, it's devastating. Um, in the US, upwards of $20 billion per year is the cost of lost work days because of depression. And why think about fun in a talk about depression? How do these things go together? Well, because until recently, we didn't really appreciate that depression, for all of our focus on negative emotions like sadness or irritability, which are certainly part of the suffering that goes along with depression, is also a, a disorder of adolescence, and adolescence is a time in which the core feature is fun. And depression is about not being able to enjoy life, not getting the experience of the fun the way you used to. And you can see this clinically. If you see a 16-year-old depressed young woman, you'll often hear that she used to spend hours with her best friend, confiding her in her, sharing secrets, giggling about the boys they were interested in, texting and calling and for hours. And they plan things like going to the under-18 night at the club or hanging out at the mall. And by the time you see her, though, she doesn't really answer the text from the friend. And she's kind of forgotten about the boys. And she just wants to stay home. When you ask parents or teachers what's different, they'll say, we miss her smile. 
So there's something really disrupted and altered about positive emotions, not just about the negative there. And the message I want to tell you today is that we can't understand adolescent depression without understanding typical adolescent development. And we can't understand either of them without really trying to get a handle on fun and its role in life during this developmental period. In my work as a neuroscientist and a clinical and developmental psychologist, I study the development of depression through the lens of positive emotions. We really focus on reward or experience or, or stimuli that are perceived as pleasant and that are worth effort, your work to get them. And using these, we're trying to understand what's different about adolescent depression. So we use functional neuroimaging. We, we've used functional magnetic resonance imaging in which we can give adolescents an experience or a task in which there's reward and measure their brain function. We've used a range of rewards from pretty basic, like winning money, pretty you know, simple and straightforward, but does the trick, to finding out that someone your age that you like likes you back. Always very potent for adolescents, for sure, but especially so maybe in the age of Facebook. And then my current favorite, which is seeing a video of someone you know, your best friend, expressing positive emotion toward you from a conversation you had recently about the best time and the most fun you've ever had. Because if adolescence is about appreciating the fun in the social context that leads to the very best and maybe the very worst things about this point in life, can we really measure what's different about adolescents' brains? Maybe about the ones who are going to get themselves into trouble with the risky behaviors, or the ones who are going to be end up with depression. And we also measure behavior, of course. It's not all done in the scanner. We need to know what's really going on. So we bring them into the lab, we watch them have that conversation with the friend. Before you know it, of course, we get kids talking about the drugs they took or are gonna take, sexual encounters they have or want to have, Achievement things too, like being co-presidents of the senior class. So it's you know it's not all the dark side, um, but we try to see what they what really goes on between friends. This is where you know the action really happens. But we also have them do computer tasks, telling us how they learn when they're rewarded, how they make decisions about reward, how hard they'll work to get a reward, and what we want to know, of course, too, is what's going on in the real life in their real worlds. So we call them. We say, "What are you doing right now? Who are you with? And where are you?" How happy did you feel on a scale of one to five back when the phone rang? And with all these together, we're hoping to get a handle on the way they process rewards and the way they're responding to these chances for fun in their lives. And we found that adolescents with depression show differences in the pattern of brain function in reward-related areas. They show less response in the ventral striatum, which is a really basic reward area. It responds to drug reward, for example, or very simple experiences. It's, a, it's a kind of the most basic area um, in the reward system. So they're showing less response there, but they're showing more response in another part of the brain, the medial prefrontal cortex. This area has many functions, but most relevant to the stuff I'm telling you is it's involved in one, res regulating other areas involved in reward and emotion, and two, processing material about the self and the social world. Important concerns for adolescents, certainly, but also two domains that are really disrupted in functioning when it comes to depression. So maybe people with depression, and these findings have been found in adults too, are, have trouble kind of taking the foot off the brake when it comes to enjoying the fun, when it comes to having pleasant experiences. They're over-controlled. Maybe they start to respond and they immediately shut it down. But you know what? We've seen a similar pattern in healthy adolescents who are later along in puberty compared with adolescents who are earlier in puberty. I'm not saying these adolescents are depressed, they're not. But perhaps depression is an exaggerated form of what's happening anyway in adolescence. It can help us understand regular adolescent development and vice versa. And in fact, one of the leading theories of how depression develops says that it's the very same brain changes that lead some adolescents to do risky things, all adolescents to do some foolish things, certainly, um, but lead other adolescents to develop depression. And the reason this is important is we need to find a way to use neuroscience to inform treatment. I agree with Matt that you can train your brain. Um, and that could be really important to understand because the treatments we have work, but not for everyone. In fact, in a national study, including multiple sites, the biggest trial of treatment for adolescent depression using the best techniques we have, adolescents got medications that we know can work, or they got psychotherapy that we know can work, or they even got a combination. And even with the best practices, 
30% didn't respond. Can you imagine if you had an illness and you found out if you get treatment, you have a 70% chance? It's, it's awful. And are we missing something? I mean, is there something that understanding these brain function patterns can tell us about why some people are depressed and how they stay depressed? The pattern of function we see has been able to tell us things like who has increases in symptoms over two years, or how do people respond to treatment? And maybe we can focus on these mechanisms to get a better handle on what's wrong with them to then address that. And we can actually do these in several innovative ways, maybe even in traditional ways. But we can use something like neurofeedback, where we give people just about real-time feedback about their brain function, with the idea of getting them to increase, say, an area that we think is not responding optimally. So could we get them to show an enhanced response in the ventral striatum? And the idea is that somehow that will influence experience and behavior and, and influence mood. We're not just trying to train the brain um, only. We're trying to train the brain for you know, the better well-being of the person. Or we can use cognitive training, where you're in front of a computer, maybe at home, maybe in the lab, and you're doing tasks or exercises that we think are involving those parts of the brain that, that might need to be responding differently. Or we could try to take it into the real world. If we'd find out more about which behaviors and which experiences are related to these patterns of brain function, maybe we can target those, feedback to the brain function, and then influence symptoms and functioning. But whatever we do, we need to do it early, while rewards and positive emotions are still intense and still sought after with such strong motivation. While the brain is still developing and we have a chance to use that plasticity to get things back on track before depression becomes a longer-term problem. We have to find a way to bring the fun to adolescents so they don't have to spend many of those important and valuable years suffering from this disorder. Thanks.